said, this is madness. I said, you know, it, it's clear to me that there are people inside and outside of the department who seem to feel that internal affairs should be functioning as an organ of defense. I said, it cannot be that way. By very definition, that's corruption. I won't be a party to it. A law enforcement officer is making $740,000 a year. But he was overruled. We got a secret report that um, his superiors wrote, delete and out. Hey, what's up, guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Today's video, we're going to be dive deep into one of the worst abuses of power that I have ever seen in my entire life. It involves the two largest law enforcement agencies right here on Long Island, the Nassau and Suffolk County Police Departments. We are about to embark down the rabbit hole and expose some serious government corruption right here in my backyard. Let's get into it. First and foremost, I want to give full credit to David Schwartz. He works for Newsday, a local newspaper right here on Long Island, and he broke this story. And I got to tell you guys, we got to protect David at all costs. Publishing this report took some serious courage. And when you hear the details, you'll understand why. I felt it my duty to share this with all of you because the world needs to see this. They need to be exposed. So let's start off with David giving a brief overview of what exactly this story entails and then we'll dive deep into the details together. And thanks so much for joining us. I'm Faith Jesse, along with investigative reporter David Schwartz. David, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks, Faith. So for those viewers who are not familiar with this story, what's going on here? So this series is called Inside Internal Affairs, and in it, we pierce the secrecy surrounding how Long Island police departments police themselves. The Nassau and Suffolk police departments have largely resisted releasing uh, information about how they investigate police misconduct, even though the state repealed a law about that. Um, and what we've found is that even in cases involving serious injury or death and alleged police misconduct, officers uh, have largely escaped discipline or not been disciplined at all. And that right there is the problem. The lack of accountability. He just said, he found in cases of death, serious injury, and police misconduct, officers received little to no discipline. Where is the accountability? That is the problem. When officers are held criminally and civilly accountable for their actions, just maybe some real change will happen. Just maybe this blatant corruption tyranny and abuse of power will stop and we can bridge the gap between law enforcement and the public but let's see what this incident is about this case here involves what one expert called a cover-up of a cover-up um, there was off-duty nassau police officer and after a night of drinking he got into a road rage incident and he ended up shooting a innocent cab driver this happened in Suffolk County, so the Suffolk police ended up investigating it, and they arrested the cab driver for allegedly driving at the Nassau police officer. Guys, let me clear this up. A Nassau County police officer off-duty was in Suffolk County getting drunk, got into a road rage incident, shot an innocent unarmed cab driver two times and the cab driver was arrested think about that just just think about it i mean it leaves me speechless but just think about that that charge was later dismissed but what we did now was try to figure out how did they wrongfully arrest this man and was any officer disciplined for that the answer was no so that of course not of course they weren't disciplined it was the first, was the first cover up was that they wrongfully arrested the man mm -hmm. the second one was almost more eye opening we found that a former head of suffolk internal affairs tried to substantiate charges against those officers who investigated the case but he was overruled we got a secret report that um his superiors wrote delete and out on so this is a excerpt 
of the secret internal affairs report right here. As you can see, the Suffolk County brass, you know, the higher ups in Suffolk County Police Department apparently did not like the chief of the internal affairs department in Suffolk County investigating the officers who investigated the Nassau County officer who shot the innocent cab driver. He was the chief was about to put substantiate charges against the Suffolk County officers who investigated. But the brass, as you can see here, put delete out. Where did this come from? Question mark. IAB report of Nassau? If so, out. And the parts that they want out, the Nassau County PD IAB report indicates he had been given morphine and that the cab driver testimony mentions his being medicated. So the reason why they want this out of the report is because the cab driver, when he was shot two times, went to the hospital, obviously was put on pain medication, and the Suffolk County Police Department thought that was the most opportune time to get a statement from him, and apparently he incriminated himself. But, you know, we'll get into the details more after this brief summary, but, I mean, this is blatant corruption, a secret internal affairs report where the brass is telling you to delete stuff. Crazy. On it against uh, evidence that he deemed crucial to finding those charges substantiated. So eventually, no officer was disciplined, no charges were substantiated in the Suffolk case. Oh, wow. wow. So, I mean, this has been an ongoing investigation. What new information did this is this series bringing to those readers? So this series reveals how the Suffolk investigation played out. And it also includes an interview with the former head of Suffolk Internal Affairs in which he talks more broadly about his time in internal affairs. He said that they weren't provided the resources to uh, properly investigate cases. And he received pushback when he was trying to substantiate cases. Um, so it, it's really an eye-opening window into that world. And when we're talking about this cab driver, I mean, like you said, he was shot. Were there any consequences for the person who pulled the trigger? The Nassau police officer was fired after three years. It took three years for Nassau Police Department to fire him. Three years. He shot a man, an unarmed innocent man, twice. And it took three years for him to be fired from the police department? You cannot make this stuff up. His fellow off-duty NASA officer who was with him, he received a 20-day fine, um, but since then he's been promoted twice. And again, none of the Suffolk officers were punished at all. Wow, and what's happening with this cab driver now? The litigation is still ongoing a decade later. You know, they might be close to a settlement. The cab Of course they're close to a settlement now. Now that the world knows what happened, the tyranny and the corruption and the abuse of power, of course, they're close to a settlement. And again, this is not coming out of the, you know, Suffolk County Police Department or the Nassau County Police Department. This is coming out of the taxpayers of Nassau and Suffolk County. That's who is being held responsible for their corruption. Something's got to change here. Something's got to change. And we're going to follow up on this. But let's hear the, let's hear the end of this. Counties have so far refused to say anything except what what's in court files, which is essentially that they did nothing wrong. It's wow. wow. a lot of great information there. Well, David, thanks. Thank you so much for coming. All right, guys. So th that's the end of uh, David's, you know, summary here. Uh, we're about to go into detail right now. And then I'll also be showing you the interview with the Suffolk internal affairs chief. He was forced out by the brass because he actually wanted to do his job and substantiate charges against officers who engage in misconduct and illegal activity. So we'll look at his interview in a little bit. Let's uh, look at the news article right now. Let's get into that. All right, guys. So we're not going to read the entire article as it is very, very long, but I'm going to read and skim through it and get the key details for you guys. I highly suggest that you read the article in its entirety. Right now it's behind a paywall, but I'm going to be taking this article and placing it on longislandaudit.com. So check there where you can read the entire article without having to pay anything. 
So let's get into it. The shooting of a Huntington Station cab driver by an off-duty Nassau County police officer in a fit of alcohol-fueled road rage has been dodged for more than a decade by evidence of cover-ups and the wrongful arrest of an innocent man. Former Nassau officer Anthony D. Leonardo opened fire on cabbie Thomas Moran after a night of dinner and drinking in 2011. He wounded the cab driver twice, pummeled him with a pistol, breaking his nose and face possible arrest on first degree assault charges. So for any normal person, he would have been charged with first degree assault. But because he's a police officer, he wasn't. And here is his picture right here. Officer Anthony D. Leonardo. So it looks like a mug shot, but. There was no mugshot, ladies and gentlemen. Instead, Suffolk County Police Department investigators initially accepted De Leonardo's account that he had shot the cab driver in self-defense. They charged the cab driver with assault after detectives took a hospital bed statement in which the cab driver purportedly exonerated De Leonardo and incriminated himself. At the time, doctors had administrated narcotic medications to dull the cab driver's pain. The shooting entangled the Internal Affairs Bureaus of Long Island's neighboring county forces in separate investigations. After more than three years, the Nassau Department dismissed De Leonardo. Separately, it punished fellow officer Edward Beans, who was at the scene of the shooting after drinking with De Leonardo with a loss of 20 days pay. So his accomplice, who was out there drinking with him, didn't do anything to stop him from shooting this man. He he just got 20 days without pay. Because Suffolk was the site of the shooting in Huntington, Suffolk police were responsible first for determining whether a crime had been committed, and if so, by whom. After the district attorney's office dropped all charges against the cab driver, Suffolk Internal Affairs examined the circumstances surrounding the cab driver's arrest. Newsdays look into how Long Island's two county police forces have policed themselves, uncovered the outcome of Suffolk's internal investigation, including how high-ranking members of the department brought the case to a close under the near total secrecy that was imposed by law on police discipline. So right here, guys, we have the another part of the secret internal affairs file where it says delete without report. I believe it says here placards, the incident listed. De Leonardo was the subject of assault degree. So More things that they wanted to delete from the internal affairs report, of course. The cab driver, then 26, had been shot twice and had his nose broken as De Leonardo tried to rip him from the cab. He spent the night in the hospital calling out repeatedly for his lawyer. He faced seven years in prison on the charges that included assaulting an officer, which were later dropped. You can't make this up. So here is him being let out of the second precinct in Huntington right here. Um, This news article got a bunch of experts to weigh in. Unanimously, Unanimously, the five experts concluded that based on the evidence provided by Newsday, the cab driver had not committed a crime. Of course he didn't. And that Suffolk police had wrongfully arrested him and that De Leonardo had shot the cab driver without legal justification, and that the Suffolk police could have arrested De Leonardo. But of course, they arrested the victim. Shocker there. Some also concluded that Suffolk police used the cab driver's arrest to cover up De Leonardo's crime, that former Suffolk district attorney Thomas Spoda reinforced the apparent cover-up by declining to conduct a grand jury investigation and that the Suffolk police leadership completed the cover-up by overruling its internal affairs chief and taking no action 
against detectives and supervisors who participated in the cab driver's arrest. It is a cover-up of a cover-up, said Bennett Gershman, the Pace University law professor. There's the law professor right over here. Cover-up of a cover-up. So we're going to get into his interview. This is um, Michael Caldarelli. He was the former internal affairs commander for the Suffolk County Police Department. Um, there's an interview with him. We'll get to that in a second. Suffolk has argued that its officers acted reasonably and in good faith. Really? Reasonably and in good faith with all of this evidence of corruption, abuse of power, evidence of we've investigated ourselves and found no wrongdoing. You really have the nerve to say that you've acted reasonably and in good faith. Here goes another expert, uh, former California judge, an internal affairs auditor. Nice. Both counties were involved in a cover-up for the purpose of protecting their officers. I'm telling you guys, that is what's happening on a daily basis. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So here are the actual details of the incident. D. Leonardo and his girlfriend joined fellow Nassau County Police Officer Edward Beans and his wife for a Saturday night dinner at the at a Farmingdale restaurant on February 26, 2011. D. Leonardo drank at least two cocktails, Beans told investigator. Beans had three beers. Then they drove, possibly drunk, to Huntington Village, where they visited three bars. Di Leonardo drank five more vodka cocktails, while Beans drank five additional beers, Beans reported. In his own statement to Nassau Internal Affairs, Di Leonardo put his alcohol consumption at six drinks during the night. A Suffolk District Attorney's investigator reported that Di Leonardo admitted consuming eight to ten drinks. The couples headed home around 1 a.m. with Beans driving an Acura and Di Leonardo behind him in an Infinity. Driving drunk. Police officers sworn to uphold the law to protect and serve are putting people's lives at risk by driving drunk. On West Hills Road, the two cars came up behind the cab driver. The cab driver testified that Beans passed, cutting him off. De Leonardo followed, flashing his high beams and forcing the cab driver to the side of the road. And here is a map of Huntington Village, West Hills Road, where it took place. Continuing on their way, the off-duty officers made a wrong turn and pulled over. The cab driver, who had started driving again, encountered them. He stopped, rolled down a window, and yelled at Di Leonardo about his reckless driving. Di Leonardo shouted back with profanities and insulted the cab driver's girlfriend, who was riding in the passenger seat. The cab driver got out of his car, but retreated when Di Leonardo and Beans got out of theirs. Throwing the Prius into reverse, he backed up 30 to 45 feet. Di Leonardo followed on foot, at some point drawing a 38 caliber Smith & Weston from his ankle holster. The cab driver put the Prius into drive and angled to make a U-turn. He estimated that he moved a foot or two before De Leonardo opened fire, emptying the five-shot revolver. One, two, three, four, five. He emptied it. Two bullets hit the cab driver, one in the chest, one in the arm. De Leonardo approached the cab, broke the driver's window with his gun butt, and pummeled the cab driver with it, breaking his nose. Does this sound like a law enforcement officer? I mean, I guess that's a bad question because we're seeing this more and more. More and more we're seeing this, and we're, the sad part is, is that they're getting away with it. The cab driver was bleeding appreciably, according to a crime scene analysis. De Leonardo tried to drag him from the cab during the struggle he dropped the revolver into the prius where it would later be recovered by suffolk police his partner ran toward de leonardo initially he reported that he tried to help de leonardo make an arrest indicating that he believed that the cab driver may have committed a crime later 
He said that he only intended to intervene between two individuals who were fighting over a loaded gun. See how the stories change? And this is police officer Edward Beans right here. Another uh, ID photo. Attempting to escape, the cab driver put the Prius into reverse again. The moving car knocked down DeLeonardo and Benz. The cab driver made a U-turn and drove to Huntington Hospital. His girlfriend dialed 911, reporting that a man in an orange shirt had shot her boyfriend and telling the operator, I think that kid said he was a cop. Near pooled blood on a, the roadway, Beans yelled to DeLeonardo, Dude, what the did you just do? He told internal affairs investigators. So even his buddy who was out drinking with him said, Dude, what did you just do? What did you just do? Because he knew. Okay. When the cab driver gets to the hospital, homicide detective Ronald Tavares thinks it's a good idea to question the cab driver while he's under narcotic medications. So apparently, when they were getting his statement, he had said, and I quote, I felt he fired at me to protect himself because I drove at him. Like, I felt he fired at me to protect himself because I drove at him. I can guarantee you that that man did not say that. That is word for word exonerating the police officer. I felt he fired at me to protect himself because I was driving at him. Implicates himself in driving at the police officer and defends the police officer. And he's, he's disputed that he's made this statement. You know, because, and there's no way of really knowing he was on narcotics. But the Suffolk County Police Department didn't care about that. Here's a picture of his lawyer. Uh, he's out of Mineola. The initial probe by the Nassau County Police Department cleared 12 hours after the shooting. Four high ranking Nassau County officers completed a preliminary investigation that became the first to clear De Leonardo and Beans of any wrongdoing. Of course. It took three years for them to figure out that they're criminals. Now we're up to the district attorney. The district attorney decides no grand jury investigation. With the evidence indicating that DeLeonardo had shot and wounded the cab driver without cause while under the influence of alcohol, Suffolk DA Spoda had the power to pursue an assault charge before a grand jury. Did he? No. Instead... Spoda chose to drop the matter. I got disorderly conducts, you know, contempt of cop charges, and they're not dropping my charges. But this district attorney for Suffolk County, former, of course, everybody's former here because, you know, they only report on this after everybody left. But he chose to drop the matter. The cab driver said, I'm glad I can move on with my life. It's just nice to know that I don't have to worry. I mean, I guess he didn't want to pursue charges, just civil litigation, which, you know, with this amount of corruption, right here is a photo of uh, the district attorney, Thomas Spoda in 2011. With this level of corruption, I don't blame him for not pressing charges. He's probably scared. These unions the thin blue line, the police department, look what they did to him for 10 years. So you can only imagine. All right, guys. So Calderelli, who was the internal affairs chief at the time of this incident, he had called for charges. He had substantiated police misconduct charges against the officers who investigated the shooting. But Suffolk County Brass, the top level guys, and probably the union, forced him to delete things from a file. And when he wouldn't, they found somebody who would. And they found somebody who wouldn't recommend charges. You see how corrupt the system is? He didn't. He wanted to do his job, but they found somebody else to cover for them. And now we're going to take a look at the interview. Very eye-opening. I said, this is madness. I said, you know, it's clear to me that there are people inside and outside of the department who seem to feel that internal affairs 
should be functioning as an organ of defense. I said, it cannot be that way. By very definition, that's corruption. I won't be a party to it. Good for him. Good for him. By the very definition, internal affairs acting as an organ of defense is corruption. True words have never been spoken. Internal affairs should be holding officers accountable for their actions, whether they're criminal or just police misconduct. But they don't. For the most part, they don't. And when they do, like this internal affairs chief right here, you see what happens. They don't want to they don't want to support him in doing his job. People inside and outside of the department, inside and outside, outside meaning elected officials. Imagine how much politics goes into this. How much pressure this man was under. But let's hear let's hear what the rest of what he has to say. I made sergeant, then I made lieutenant, and I went to internal affairs as a, an investigator. How ironic. SCPD named Calderelli internal affairs chief. The commissioner ordered him to reform the troubled unit. Cases were not getting done in a timely fashion, and that uh, in some cases they were finding that the evidence presented in the case was not consistent with the findings. But uh, as time went on, I began to, to get the sense that, you know, substantiated cases were really not welcome news. One of the biggest problems that I believe exist with the investigation of police misconduct is there are some built-in sort of conflicts of interest for an organization, for an, a municipality, actually. You know, complaint investigations have to protect the public interest. They protect the reputation and integrity of the department of the, you know, the entire municipality. And they also protect police officers from, you know, unjust claims. The problem is by finding misconduct, it can be embarrassing to the police department, the police commissioner, to the head of the municipality. And it also can provide plaintiffs in civil actions with uh, very strong ammunition to use in a lawsuit against the, the municipality. SCPD forced Calderelli out of internal affairs. Shocker. He retired in 2017. So a man that stood up for his oath, stood up for what was right, for justice, he's no longer in law enforcement anymore. He was forced out of internal affairs for substantiating too many claims and not, you know, towing the company line. And he's 100% right. There are so many conflicts of interest. That's why we all know police shouldn't be investigating themselves. There should be an outside independent review board that has authority over the police department. Complete separate entity. Because when you have law enforcement investigating themselves, this internal affairs chief is 100% right. Conflicts of interest. Because now you're making the elected officials look bad if you have a substantiated claim. And they might lose an election. Now you're giving ammunition to people who want to file a civil lawsuit. It's too much corruption. We need a separate agency, period. So now that you've seen the cover-up, the blatant corruption, the abuse of power, I wanted to share with all of you, how much are we paying these public servants? Now, this is not a law enforcement list. I want to make that clear. It might seem that way, but this is actually the highest paid employees in all of Suffolk County. So let's take a look at this list. So number one on the list, police sergeant Thomas McDermott, $428,000. Now to put that in perspective, the president of the United States gets paid $400 thousand dollars per year and this police sergeant in suffolk county is getting paid more than the president so now we move on to number two even less than a sergeant is a police officer getting paid three hundred and fifty five thousand dollars this is as of 2020 keep going down the list all these mid two hundred thousand dollar jobs are all law enforcement except for one chief medical examiner 
who gets paid 254000 Just to put that in perspective as well, a chief medical examiner has to do 12 to 14 years of schooling. A law enforcement officer typically only needs a high school diploma and six months of training. So keep that in mind. If you look down this list, all police, 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 all getting paid over $200,000. So now if we switch over to Nassau County, the other county that's in question, let's see if they're doing any better. Not at all. This law enforcement officer is getting paid $740,000 a year. Again, this is in 2020. He's a police captain, chief of detectives. $740,000 $740,000 a year. That's almost double the United States president's salary. Insane. Now, you're going to tell me about overtime and everything else. I don't care. A public servant should not be getting paid almost a million dollars a year from our tax dollars. Come on. Let's be real. Look at all these high numbers. 250000 250000 226000 In Nassau County, the chief medical examiner is not number eight on the list, 23rd. All 22 people in front of the chief medical examiner are law enforcement officers. Go figure. And behind that are law enforcement officers and district attorneys. Look at these numbers, all in the 200,000s. Completely insane. Now, with all that being said, where do we go from here? I can only speak for myself. As a resident of Suffolk County, born and raised, I am going to be petitioning my grievances to my government. I'm going to be following up with not only my elected officials here, but as well as the police department, Suffolk and Nassau, internal affairs, and I'm going to bring my camera because you guys know that I love to exercise my First Amendment right. So stay tuned to the channel. We're going to be following up on this. This is an amazing story by David Schwartz. Shout out to him. I really highly suggest you read the whole story. It's on my website, longislandaudit.com. Insane. Stay tuned for further updates. We're going to hold them accountable here. My tax dollars aren't going to a settlement without me petitioning grievances to my government. I can't do this without all of you. I truly appreciate your support. Together, we the people are strong. Let's make some change. As always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Long Island Audit. Peace.